Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. In today's video, I'm going to be building a French battleship called Charlemagne, and I'm going to be hunting down the last ships of the Royal Italian Navy in the 1940s. This is a scenario called Hunter of the Seven Seas by the Kyler 95. He sent in his scenario through my link down below in the description, and that's the only way that I currently take on scenarios. But you guys are prolific in sending them in, as I, at this point, have 550 scenarios sitting around. So if you do send it in, by all means go ahead, but don't be surprised if it's going to take me a while, if at all, to get around to it. Now, on with the scenario. The year is 1940, and the Imperial French battleship Charlemagne and his escort, his escort? Maybe her escort, hunt down the last ships of the Royal Italian Navy who have all linked up somewhere in the Aegean Sea to prepare a surprise attack on the Imperial Navy. They are unaware that the French fleet has sailed out to destroy them. I'm going to be operating a 1940s uh, era fleet, but if the year is 1940, then my battleship probably wouldn't have been built in 1940, so I'm going to say 1936. And, uh, well, it might look a bit like I have a tech advantage, but I'm going to need that. Because I am not going up against one other battleship, I am going up against five. The enemy will also have one battlecruiser more than I do, and they'll have ten heavy cruisers more than I do. Uh, there were no real specific requests for the scenario other than to make the battleship the most perfect ship possible and don't forget to rename it Charlemagne. Um, the whole description of the most perfect battleship possible is vague. Some people might say that 18-inch guns are the most perfect battleship. Others might go for aesthetics, others might go for meme builds. I'm just going to do my own little uh, designing. And, um, well, it's probably not going to be to everybody's like, but I'll try to get something out that actually resembles something that the battle, that the French might have built. Now, it is 1940. I'm not going to say that the French have built a super battleship yet. Um, just a modern battleship will do. I think the modernized Dreadnought's a bit too old. Now, the French, um, I'm not really too up on their design philosophy. I would like it to be relatively quick, so let's say 32 knots, and a whole lot less displacement. 50,000 tons, and we're going to name it as the Charlemont, Charlemont, there we go. We're going to be powering that thing with double-geared steam turbines out of oil and a forced boiler. Uh, it is a high-tech ship, at least I am proclaiming that it is Turbo Electric Drive 2 and Shaft 3. Group 4 armor, well, you know all this. This is pretty much my uh, more or less standard battleship build. And it's really got no surprises in there. Um, what propellant have I not used in a while? White powder, I think. This does have a, well, an okay rain or an okay acceptable uh, flash fire chance, 7.5%. Let's put radar on the ship, generation one. Advanced radio telegraph, and we're gonna go with a stereoscope four rangefinder and a sonar one. Hydraulics, hydraulic, English, electro hydraulic, no electrical turrets, electro hydraulics the next tier, and semi-automatic gun reloads. I'm tempted to put torpedoes on this ship, but I'll not do it. I'm gonna go without the torpedoes. Now, previously when I built a French battleship, I put the tower all the way there. This time I'm going to go with a bit more of a standard build. I'm thinking two guns on the bow, two guns on the stern. Or rather, two turrets. The real question is going to be, what tier? Or rather, what caliber? I have, of course, access to the 18 inches. Uh, they do take up a fair amount of space, and more importantly, weight. And weight is something I'm... Well, I have a decent amount of it, but these things weigh 3,700 tons, so they are very heavy indeed. Um, what would the most perfect battleship be? I'd say that's something that can engage various targets, potentially at the same time. Now, there are no destroyers in this scenario, which is refreshing. There are no light cruisers, there are no PT boats. So I don't really need to take on any uh, larger amount of threats. At least not in the sense that I need fast firing small caliber guns. So I can probably go with something a little different. Uh, why two funnels? Why not two funnels? I like two funnels. 
What sort of secondary caliber? 8 inch, 7 inch? 8 inch are great. Uh, it's all mark 4 with the exception of the 3 inch. Right. Considering going with a mixed bag of armament, because in the previous attempts that I've made, that actually served me quite well. So I'm going to go with a very unorthodox design of having a couple of uh, dual 18 inch. Maybe not. Never mind. That whole 18 inch plan just went out the door because even the doubles are just too heavy for this ship. Let's go for 15 inch triple barrel. And the ship is overweight. Fine, we'll up the displacement. Go to 55,000 tons. Yep, there we are. Four weight offset is pretty dramatic at 15%, so I'll definitely need to balance that off because I would get some severe penalties if I were to sail the ship out of the dock using that. I still don't like how far this turret has to be in order to balance out the ship. But I don't really know how otherwise I could try and balance it. Uh, while this this could arguably work, but now I have an even more dramatic aft weight offset. And if I were to have this space in the middle, I really wouldn't quite know what to do with it. I mean, I could put a couple of 9-inch centerline guns just for the fun of it, and to engage cruisers. But then again, it's 9-inch guns. They are considered main caliber. I would probably rather have a couple of secondary 8-inch guns on there. Because this would allow me to engage a different target. Unfortunately, they don't have the best firing arc. So let's put it a bit different. Do one there and one here. And the ship is overweight again. Huh. What is so heavy? Because the 15 inch guns, I don't think are it. Sure, they're heavy. But are they that bad? What has most of my weight? Modern tower, 6,290 tons. Holy shit. Yeah, if you take off the radar, you take off a fair amount of the weight. But it's just that the main tower, in totality, is 6,500 tons. And I would like this ship to be accurate. Alright. Once more. Let's see if I can go for... Yeah, we'll just go for 60,000 tons. Um, as with most projects, the situation develops. And that leads to some different design thinking. And that leads to a, uh, well, not an entire redo of the design, but at least a bit. Unfortunately, I cannot put down a secondary for the barbettes up here. Would really like it if I could. Because a barbette over here would make it quite easy to get a decent ship. I could... Could I? Could I put it here? I mean, I, that's a standard. Um, they seem to somewhat be attached. Yeah, see? Hmm. I don't get why these things have to be glued to a standard. That makes very little sense to me. <laughs> Not that that's gonna work. Uh, could I do it now? Yes. Interesting. They're not quite super firing. But this thing can swing... No, it cannot swing a 360. Ah, oh, you'd think so. That's because it's too close to the tower and it's... It's pretty much welded to the aft tower, so it's not like I can move it back and then make it a 360. This thing also refuses to be a 360. Really? You'd think that these could just free spin, because they have the clearance. But unfortunately not. If I remove this, 
No, turret won't do it either. I have seen it happen with ships, that they have free spinning turrets, but I'm not sure how I did it back in the day. Um, I could put an 8 inch on there, I suppose. It's a bit on our... No. Really? I can fit a 9 inch on there, but not an 8 inch. Uh, sometimes I think the game is a bit, a bit too restrictive in what it does and does not allow. Because this stuff is really not that much of an impact on the design, one would think. But apparently it's enough for the game to go, no, 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 you can't do that. Take a bit of weight by the funnels. Um, these make the funnels quite a bit heavier. So we just went from 57,500 to 56,800. That's 700 tons. Engine efficiency is still 100%. Not too bad. I just have all this room over here that I, well, can't really use. This is turning into a weird ship. And she still has to defeat a large amount of enemy battleships. Let's just tear off some of the weight again, or some of the displacement. Go to 55. I liked the 50 ton warship a little better, because I think it's just really quite hard to make that work. Three and a half, four weight offset, aft one and a half. Look at how far that turret has to be. How hard does this have to be, guys? Come on. Fuck it. What would the AI design thing that is? There we go. 14 inch. Huh. Curious. They put a dual 7 inch between the 14 inch triples on the bow. That is a very interesting choice. So they put this on the barbette. And then they use that barbette for a twin seven. We've got twin and triple fives. I don't like having a mix of twins and twi twins and twipples. Twins and triples, because that causes different ammunition stores. So I'm going to adjust that bit. Because I don't really want to see that. I think that's enough 5-inch guns. That's 15 on a broadside, plus 4-inch. And then we got those 7-inch guns. Maybe I could put this on a barbette. No, not with that amount of displacement left. Whoa! I didn't touch the armor quality at all, but they decided to go for 18 and a half inch 25-inch on the turret? Good lord, that's a lot of armor. I actually like this French battleship that the AI designed a bit better than my own. Anti-Torp 3, Anti-Flood, Aux 4, Shaft 3, Turbines 2, yep. Yeah. Curious. And I know I can still play with the range slider, but I'm just going to keep it as is. Sonar 2, Generation 2. <laughs> I quite like this design. Let's see if I can balance it out and then take it into combat, because I've spent way too long already on the design process. I know some people really enjoy it, some people just skip it altogether. You do you, and I'll do my designing. Or, well, let the AI handle my designing. This thing has nuts amounts of armor. Let's see if it actually performs in battle. Now, it's a pretty large fleet, ac fleet action today, as I get assistance from four battle cruisers and eight heavy cruisers. 
old. Heavy cruisers. Bruy, Love, Bulldog, and Ernest Renan. And these are 7 inch gun cruisers. With a lot of 2 inch secondaries. And torpedoes galore. To a range of 10.2. Okay. Uh, these are more heavy cruisers. I can just do torpedo runs with my heavy cruisers. And considering just how many these things fire. I mean, that's 8 plus 5. That's 13 per side. Times 4 ships. Per group. Bloody hell, I'm going to have a lot of torpedoes in the water. Alright. Group of the Duquesne. You're going to turn left. That's the Duquesne, the Embuscade, uh, Tourville and Souffron. And the other heavy cruisers. You guys are just going to steam ahead. Because I think you're going to intersect with that formation. Yeah, they're coming with this way. Uh, what's your torpedo range graphically? There. Alright, hold. My plan is to have these heavy cruisers move ahead of the formation. And by doing so, I'll be able to cross torp. So I'm going to send some torpedoes into this column. And send some torpedoes into that column. And the same is going to be done by the other heavy cruisers. The, the group the, uh, from the Duquesne. And we're going to get a beautiful cross torp. That's the plan anyway. There is a very important condition for this particular battle. And that is that I cannot lose any ship. And I must destroy every ship. So, can't lose any. And gotta blow up everything. The battle cruisers, Couronne and uh, Saint Thomas d'Aquin, uh, Madeleine de Brest and Richelieu are assisting. 16 inch guns, which they can fire accurately thanks to the stereoscopic 5 rangefinder and generation 2 radar. No torpedoes, but then again, at this point, you don't really need them. Um, gun orientation to port, or sorry, to bow to stern. Very good. Let's just cross the T with those guys. So head that way. Charlemagne, I'm going to have slowed down a bit. Because if I can just maintain position, then these guys will come ahead of me anyway. And I can let the 14-inch guns from the Charlemagne do some work. Heavy cruisers are immediately opening up. Rui has a speed of 31.5. See, I think that the condition that says you cannot lose a single ship is a bit too strict. It is really difficult to make sure that I don't lose a single ship, considering how many I have. Heavy cruisers are generally, well, decently protected, but also, in this case, easy prey. Because they don't have the speed of a destroyer, and they generally don't have the armor to sustain too many hits. So they're in a really tough spot. Now this heavy cruiser group that's going to turn to the left is in range, but it's only the Duquesne. Uh, Embuscade, Tourville and Souffrain are still moving. You know what, I'll just torp with the, the Bruy. And with the Duquesne. Torpedoes away. Duquesne is still orienting towards the threat. As I had hoped, the love hasn't fired yet. Come on, Duquesne. Good time is right now. Because then we get the cross torp. Otherwise, it's going to be one salvo from one direction and one salvo from another direction. And it's going to be pretty easy to dodge. So, if you could just... Make sure that you launch those things. Thank you. Or should I say merci beaucoup? Alright, we launched against this ship. The next ship is going to be this one. And that's going to be done by the Love. And in the meanwhile, the battleship is working away. We have scored two hits, but they were both ricochets. 
just stop entirely. Love has launched her torpedoes. And then it's on to the Ambuscade, which is going to fire at that ship as well. Now their lead cruiser, battleship, battleship. Their lead battleship has taken a fair amount of hits. Bit of damage. And as of right now, it seems to be dishing it out against the heavy cruisers here. Seems to be launching some shells towards the love. Firing some shells, rather. Oh, whoa, 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 Bruy. Whoa, whoa. Arch starboard, buddy. Looks like they're about to encounter the torpedoes. Or maybe the other way around. But that they're going to miss this ship, but potentially hit the next one. Which is good. And there is another salvo coming in for that big ship there. Ambuscade is not launching yet. Uh, Love has launched. This is the salvo from the Love. And then we have the Bouledon. Torpedo that. Unfortunately, it looks like the Charlemagne is a bit in the way here. She's still doing 20 knots and she will not be able to slow down. Whoa, that's one cruiser, potentially cruiser less. I got really lucky with the amount of torpedoes that my heavy cruisers carry. If this had been reversed, oh boy, it would have been a very different fight. And that whole you cannot lose a single ship would definitely not have materialized. Battle cruisers are under AI control. As risky as that is. Bouledonia has launched. Leaving the torpedoes from the Ernest Renan ready. But she's first going to have to avoid the Charlemagne. Which is going to be sitting there for a bit. At a range of 5.8 clicks out. Now, who else do we have? We got the Tourville. She is clear to launch, she's just not launching yet. More torpedoes are forcing this Italian ship out of position. And she is sinking. Heavy cruiser Carbon. Heavy cruiser Carbon, 8 inch guns, 3 inch secondaries, 2 inch secondaries. More torpedoes are speeding towards the already sinking cruiser there. Uh, yeah, no, don't worry, she's already dead, you can stop kicking her. And there is another group of torpedoes which might impact the ships over here. But I think we're approaching the edge of operational range for the torpedoes. Uh, yeah, you took structural damage, so that was torpedoes. I want you guys to hit the Miseno. Tourville still hasn't launched. We have torpedo... No, what is that? Flooding? There is so much going on that it's really hard to keep up with everything that's visually going on. Like ships detonating. Um, with what's going on in the list. And with what ships I might need to pull away from the positions that I have to make sure that they don't accidentally sink. Ambuscade has launched her torpedoes? I thought that those were already on the way. Had been for a long time, but nope. These cruisers are pretty fucked as they are. They got torpedoes coming in from here, and now more from here. So they got nowhere to go. And truth be told, all of my ships seem perfectly fine. Actually a lot better than I had expected. Because I was pretty certain that I was going to take some serious hits. Especially early on with the heavy cruisers as they were crossing the T. But it's just not happening. And it looks like all the Italian ships are turning tail. Either to just fall back in general, or because they're avoiding some sort of torpedo. Vettor Pisani takes a torpedo hit and immediately gets reduced to 3% structural integrity. It's a heavy cruiser of 11,150 tons versus the Duquesne, which is just 2,000 tons heavier. But it didn't take long for the uh, Vettor Pisani to sink. And it looks like the other heavy cruisers are going to come off pretty well. 
battle cruisers are still chipping away at whatever else happens to be floating around here. Um, the numbers of the Italians are dwindling exceptionally quickly. Now, let's see if I can do another torpedo attack. Because the Tourville should be ready. But I think that by the time that the torpedoes get to the targets, there won't be any targets. Duquesne is facing it out with the other heavy cruisers from the Italians. At just three clicks range, but my accuracy is 11%. Their accuracy is 3.5% because we are far ahead technology-wise. Charlemagne has hit for 975 damage in total with her main armament. Secondary guns are not terribly impressive as of right now. I want these heavy cruisers to once again fall in and just completely cut off the formation. Well... Maybe formation's the wrong word at this point. Because there, there really isn't any formation. It's just a ragtag band of Italians which are falling back. Oh, flooding on the Duquesne. Do you have bulkheads? Standard. Miseno sinks. That was their lead cruiser. I'm going to pull you out of the line, Duquesne. And Biscard, you can keep going. Souffrant is clear to launch, but she doesn't have the launching angle yet. These guys haven't invented the use of torpedoes. Fortunately. Now, it looks like the battle cruisers have been doing some serious damage towards these guys. But then again, also getting hit by two torpedoes is not very helpful for the, the health of your ship. So the uh, Gloria Veneta might be the next volunteer. Well, maybe not so much volunteer then. Might be the next target to sink. I'm currently dialed in on the heavy cruiser here. Trieste. And I think the battle cruisers are working away again. No, they're not. Interesting. Then who is firing at those battleships? Oh, it's the battle. It's it. It's not even the battle cruisers. It's the heavy cruisers. That's not quite what I was expecting. Sorry, you can stay on autopilot. Trieste sinks. I knew I had a tech advantage, but I wasn't quite expecting it to be this big. I thought that, due to having more battleships, the Italians could keep up. Well, not quite. Torpedoes away from Tourville and from Souffre. Both against, I think, the Ruggieri. Uh, sorry, Ruggiero. Um, but I'm not sure what exactly I told them to torpedo at this point. Charlemagne still trying to slow down. Let's just pick off that last bit of health from the battleship there. I have done 44,000 damage versus 1,300 from the Italians. Bloody hell. Not a chance. Looks like these torpedoes don't do much. And these, similarly, won't be very effective. There goes the Forza. And the Aquila Doro. What got you? Ammo detonation. The whole ship's on fire. That would do it. 44% chance to hit another battleship. That's the uh, Gloria. Currently getting worked over by the 14-inch guns from the Charlemagne. Another battleship sinks. Another heavy cruiser's in severe trouble. Oh, 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 oh. This is not good. What's going on here? You're getting hit by 13-inch guns. I need you to fall out of the formation. Because I can still lose this scenario. All that needs to happen is for one of the French ships to die. One French warship sinks and I'm gone. Heavy cruisers, Ambuscade, Tourville, Suffren, engage the Italian... Paluniro, sorry, Palinuro. Fernando II sinks. Gloria Veneta sinks, structural damage. Holy shit. 
You alright? Well, love has been better, but she's at least making it out of the fight. With firepower still going. Same for the Duquesne. Uh, retreat. And yes, you can insert your French retreat jokes here. Now, I was planning on torpedoing the formation again using the group from the Couronne, but there's no formation left to torpedo. There goes the San Luigi. Before you guys ask, by the way, can you do the scenario in reverse to make it a bit more balanced? Uh, no, there are so many scenarios in my inbox, about 550 at the point that I'm making this video, that I never revisit a scenario because there are just too many to play. I have done 56,000 damage and they've done 2,000. That is some efficient warfare going on right there. They still have one battleship. And a battle cruiser or two. Although that number is quickly going to change. Two, three heavy cruisers. That is all. Narco sinks. What got you? Battle cruiser, 16 inch guns. Yeah, that would do it to you. Trento. Trento is relatively stable, hasn't taken any flooding yet, but it seems to be burning up fairly uh, fairly badly. Minimum bulkheads, and that's going to put her down. Either the fire or the flooding, but I think it might be the flooding. Done. Now what are they firing to... what are they using to fire back at me? 8 inch guns. So they actually have heavier guns than I do. Bigger guns. But I'm not sure if they're actually employing those properly or if they're even able to land hits with them. I'm going to change formation or fall back with this cruiser group. Because I'm thinking that we might not have too much chance for the Ambuscade to survive if she gets hit. <sighs> that was pretty close. This should kill the battleship. And Tourville only had one launch, or what is it, two launchers? Two launchers ready, that's eight torpedoes. That should be more than enough to put the uh, uh, Ruggiero down. And then it's down to the uh, Sibilia and Palinuro. Without taking a, well, not entirely without taking a scratch on the French, but... Let's be honest, these Italian ships, they did not really stand a chance. Torpedo should be impacting the battleship right about now. This heavy cruiser seems to have wisened up though. All ships engage the Ruggiero. Oh my god, it's gonna be murder. Yeah. All sorts of parts are flying around. The Aquilo Volante. And she just got hit by seven torpedoes, I imagine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And she detonated her own ammunition. Or, well, the torpedo did that. Ruggiero is falling back. The torpedoes here don't look good. I don't imagine we're going to be landing any hits here. Chance to pen? 44%. Seven inch guns. I have a belt armor of 5.4, but with a 118% uh, armor boost quality, so that's about, let's say, 11 inch. They can penetrate at a range of 2.5 kilometers, 14.8. So yes, they will do damage, and they'll probably do critical ha damage if they hit me. But whereas they're firing with 4%, I'm firing with 11. So my accuracy is so much higher that I'm just landing a lot more shells on the target. Looks like the battle cruisers are starting to slug down the Sibilia now. Oh, sorry, the uh, Sibilla. And Charlemagne is also weathering her down. 14 inch shell fire. 
7 inch shell fire for good measure, 5 inch and 4 inch, everything is firing at the uh, Italian battle cruiser there. The game is so pretty. I'll try to capture one of those 14 inch salvos on cinematic mode. In case you want to use that, control shift alt uh, Z is the, is the way to turn off the HUD. Ammo detonation, fire, flooding. Looks like all the shells impacted at or near the region of the bow. And Sibylla has few bulkheads, which is going to be pretty much certain death for her. Now, the uh, Aquila is sinking, the Sibylla is sinking uh, right about now, leaving the Ruggiero to potentially have torpedo problems. She does have torpedo problems. And the Palinuro, well, she's pretty much gone too. Halfway through. Whoa. That was the flooding on the Ruggiero. And that means that the Port Palinuro is surrounded by French heavy cruisers there. French heavy cruisers and battle cruisers there. And a French battleship over here. So she really only has one way to escape. And if she, if she tries that, she's going to get torpedoed. So, uh, a total victory to the French. The one thing that I thought was going to be tricky about this scenario was that I was going to be faced with um, AI designed ships of my own fleet that is and well sometimes you get AI ships which are very good like this time sometimes you get AI ships which are just dreadful minimum bulkheads no maneuverability poor range finding you just can't hit anything with those but these these were great so thank you for watching, and uh, thank you for uh, sending in the scenario, the Kyler95. If you have one of your own, be sure to send that in, and if you like my videos, if you like the channel, then by all means, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you soon for another video.